Co-op is the ARC, the Australian Research Council Centre of Excellence for Particle Physics at the Terra Scale. It's been funded to look, the, to analyse the data of the Large Hadron Collider using the ATLAS experiment. It brings together uh, theoretical and experimental physicists as well as computer scientists and system administrators. And there are four universities involved. Uh, University of Melbourne is a lead agent for Co-op, also University of Sydney, uh, Monash University and University of Adelaide. As well as that we have partner investigator institutes right across the world in the US and Europe and we pull together with uh, very similar projects on within the the whole Atlas collaboration. It's uh, the primary centre in Australia for looking at particles at what's considered the energy frontier. The Large Hadron Collider is uh, the latest of, of, a, of many many generations of particle accelerators. It's a large 27 kilometer ring that's located in Geneva. It's on the border of France and Geneva. Uh, it's uh, deep underground and there are four uh, laboratories located around the ring. Where uh, particles, typically the nucleus of hydrogen, are accelerated to the highest energies that technology can, can give us at the time. Almost at the speed of light, two proton together and smash them together to provide enough energy to produce new particle or new forces. We're trying to understand what, what they're made of uh, by breaking them apart at, with the, 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 the most extreme collisions we can generate. The aim is then to investigate those collisions which happen at a very high energy to see what's, what's happening at those high energy scales. To analyse the collision of the Large Hadron Collider, we need an apparatus, and this apparatus is the ATLAS experiment. So the ATLAS experiment is one of the LHC's four main experiments on the, uh, on the ring, on the main beam line. The ATLAS experiment is one of the two multipurpose experiments, which just tries to get as much new physics and as much measure all processes which happen at the LHC. It's like a large digital camera, which each component has its own function, particularly, for example, each component analyzes a different color. And by doing that with high resolution, we can reconstruct what, what took place right at the, at the time that the, the two beam particles collided. What it's trying to do is to look for what's considered the sort of the parton level interaction, which is at the TeV scale, or, or a billion times the proton mass. To do that we need a very complex detector and it's complex so that we need many people, many experts to build it and to operate it. So once the protons collide inside the Atlas detector, um, thousands of particles are streaming out from the collision region and they pass through different parts of the detector and we have to identify what the particles are, measure their energy and momentum and then we keep some of those events and we throw others away. And these events um, uh, which happen um, many times a second, millions of times a second, uh, need to um, be uh, processed. So the raw um, electronic data needs to be converted into um, uh, digital events that can then be further analysed, um, processed, stripped, all the interesting information taken out of it. And uh, we're, re we're recording at a data rate which is uh, huge. Um, in fact, when the experiment was first mooted, there was the idea of of trying to read out all of that data was was a bit mind-blowing. It, um, it was estimated to be about one, one and a half times of the total telecommunications of the world at the time. The LHC was producing uh, 15 petabytes of data a year, so this is, um, they often refer to the, the stack of CDs from here to the moon. It's, it's a phenomenal amount of data. And uh, a tiered system was developed known as the Worldwide LHC Computing Grid, where from uh, Geneva, CERN, the data was distributed to uh, tier one centres around the world, large sites with storage capacity and, and archival capabilities, and then further distributed to tier two sites, of which COEP is an example, and we have about 10 racks of 1,000 computers that do our analysis and research. What we call the standard model of particle physics is a theory that describe the fundamental interaction between the fundamental particles. And so far, has been incredibly, incredibly successful. I would say that from the point of view of science, it's the most tested theory ever. The standard model is a description of the fundamental particles of, of, that make up matter, as well as the particles that describe force carrying. So the, the set of uh, forces, such as the strong uh, electromagnetic and weak forces, are 
uh, those that describe essentially the main uh, types of interactions that the, the, the building blocks of, of matter uh, engage with each other. Uh, what the uh, particle physics experiments are trying to do is explore the predictions of the standard model and over decades the theorists have been winning the game. Every time they, they predict uh, a measurement uh, result we go away and experiment, uh, on, on various experiments and bingo up comes the result saying the theorists are right again. One piece was missing just before when we started a large atom collider and the last piece of the standard model was the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is important in the standard model because it's the responsible of fundamental particle masses. So the discovery of this particle will really close the standard model of particle physics. So it's interesting to reflect on the involvement of Australia in the discovery of the Higgs boson. So firstly, we had a number of people in the ATLAS experiment whose names appeared on the paper, uh, University of Adelaide, University of Melbourne, University of Sydney, all their names were on the Higgs discovery paper. And we were lucky because at that time there was the biggest conference in particle physics and it was in Melbourne. So the announcement of the Higgs boson was done together at CERN and in Melbourne. About a thousand people from all over the world came down uh, to Melbourne and attended ICHAP. And by that time our experimentalist colleagues knew that there was something big uh, in their data. However, they would not even tell us, their theory colleagues. In the build-up to the announcement, um, many of the collaboration knew we'd, that, that we had discovered this, uh, this particle, and we were under oath of secrecy to uh, not let, it, let the cat out of the bag. So even we did not know that. It was a little bit like uh, the night before Christmas, when you knew that something big is going to happen next morning, but you never actually knew what your present was. And on the 4th of July, here in the, at Melbourne, in, in simultaneously with the announcement in, in Geneva, uh, the Higgs boson was announced to the world. It was a very exciting time for everybody because we'd put so much effort into it, um, not just in the building of the experiment, which took a long time, but um, there, we have uh, staff members here at Melbourne and elsewhere um, and students who'd worked on the extraction of the signal, um, which was a very major task. So I, I remember back the, the day of the Higgs discovery very deeply, because it was something of a religious ex experience for me. When the announcement was actually made, the, uh, and there was to great, to great response all around the world, it, I, I couldn't take the smile off my face for a very long time. And, and there was a, a buzz right through the audience, which, which was, uh, it, was, it was something more akin to a football match than uh, a physics result, so it was really a wonderful time. And in fact, I think the discovery of the Higgs boson was probably the most important physics discovery, I think, in the last 30 years, without doubt, because it's uh, the, the thing that explains the standard model, brings it all together, and really focuses it as a, as a well-defined theory. Doesn't mean that we finish, we have still a lot of physics we don't understand. For example, the Higgs boson explained the mass of the particle we know, but 85% of the matter in the universe is of a nature that we don't know, and we call it dark matter. We know that it's there. Our galaxies would not have formed as they are today without dark matter, and it's been seen in all sorts of scales by the, by the astrophysicists, but we don't know what it is. And on the other hand, we have a tiny particle that we call neutrino that permeates all the universe, and it's quite important that the standard model believes say, predict no mass, but we have mass there. And again, this is a failure of the standard model. So there are points where the standard model does not describe all the physics around us. I think we are like in the, um, when one century ago, people thought that they understood all the physics and they had all the electromagnetists described and there were very tiny discrepancies or some part they didn't understand and trying to chase these things they didn't understand is start quantum mechanics and all the physics we know now. So most probably we are at a turning point. It's amazing to work on an experiment that's, that's so big uh, because it, it really has the potential to address uh, the big questions, the big fundamental questions of, of uh, particle physics and, and science at the fundamental scale. We're trying to study the environment of the Big Bang. What, what better job could a person have? Yeah, actually sometimes you, you see something, you won't know what it is. It'll just be something beyond what was expected. 
and that'll be the best thing, I think. The, the history of, of, the, of the universe from its very inception depends upon us understanding particle interactions, and that's what drives us on.